antlers, assumptions, and artillery. Irma had quickly stolen Bjorn's jacket. This was for multiple reasons. Reason one was that she was just not dressed for the downright freezing temperatures outside the arcologies. Reason two was that Bjorn didn't need it thanks to his brand. Reason three was that it left him outright exposed with only the straining t-shirt on which she considered a massive win. And reason four was she liked wearing his stuff. It was like a tent that let everyone know she had herself a man. The next few salvos of artillery fire were well received before a number was projected above the crowd at 23,412. What's the number about? Martha asks as the crowd cheers. Tundra worms killed, Crow says. So many? Martha asks in shock. For a slower breeding species, that would be the kind of damage that would put it on the endangered list. They're both genders at once, and when they get into a mating frenzy, every single worm can pump out hundreds of eggs at the same time. We're barely making a dent in the population. The reason we're not up to our necks in the things is because there's just not enough food for them. So if they made it to another world, Martha asks as she imagines entire planets covered in hordes of cannibalistic worm monsters. Why weren't there warnings about these things if they were so infectious and dangerous? They would die. The worms are ravenous because they warm up incessantly and that burns calories in axiom. But they have no way to cool down. A warmer world would mean more food, yes. But they'd boil alive in hours at most. And other cold worlds tend to be glacial and they can't get through ice. It melts on them and they drown. No, you need a world like this one for them to live, thank goodness, Crow explains. And why do you know so much about these creatures? Martha asks. One of them bit me, and I decided to be productive about it and research rather than start fishing for the evil things with grenades, Crow says. To be fair, you did that too, Bjorn says, after I researched it. Everyone starts off just killing the things. Of course, something comes flying out of the ground trying to eat you and you better believe the bullets and blades get in the air in a hurry. Didn't you punch the first one? Crow asks. When was that? He's always known about the worms, Holly asks. You were taking a nap after the trip and were safe at the time, so I went outside to get a feel for the planet. A few steps out past the hypercrete platform the arcology was on, and something started shaking the ground under me. I jump back and this pillar of pale skin, topped with teeth, comes flying out. I punch it hard and hit something vital, causing the damn animal to flop down in a daze. I take a few steps back onto the hypercrete platform, and about three seconds later other worms are rushing out to take bites out of their fellow. By the time I finish watching the sick show, I've got about ten other guys around me just staring at it. Is that how you met Crow? Holly asks. Technically we met on the ship, but I only knew him as the crazy guy who was trying to take the blame for someone else's nonsense. Bjorn answers. What? His name in its native language is phonetically identical to another soldier's family name. At the time they both met, Crow was going by Koga, which was a problem when the other guy was of the Koga ninja clan and was using that as a way to get a whole bunch of pranksters following his lead. We talked it out and I decided to have my fun by mistaking every call for a Koga as one for me. It never went anywhere and I got put on latrine duty a few times for the silliness, but honestly, it broke up the monotony nicely. Crow says with a shrug. You, cleaning toilets? Irma asks. When you're bored out of your mind, anything is a welcome distraction. Crow says before nodding. Time to get out of the cold and win. If the scorecard is up, then all that's left for them to do is set fire to the remains and deny the wretched things a feast of their own kin. You know, I keep forgetting that Zalwar has something so horrible on it. It's easy to forget inside the arcologies, Irma remarks. I'm a Zalwar native and I haven't been outside the Arcologies anywhere near as much until I got in with you guys. What's the saying? A good family can expand your horizons? Holly asked. Oh, we're family already. That's awesome. The girls will love to hear that, Irma says happily. Using her lower arms, keep the jacket close even as she hops up and hugs Holly with her upper arms. Where are they? Bjorn asked the relevant question. They don't like the cold so they're inside and Oh, um, Irma says. Oh, wait. So they were waiting inside the whole time and you didn't say anything? Holly asks, and Irma taps herself in the head in a silly me expression. Oh, so I get to meet all the girls that my little Holly is making into part of her family? Lead on then, Martha says to cut through any upcoming awkwardness. Looks like we're moving. Keep it real, Crow. 
Bjorn says, holding up a fist that gets punched in return by Crow. You too, Bear. Try not to have too much fun with the caribou hares and squirrels. No such thing, Irma calls back, even as she starts leading the way, and Crow just chuckles. It turns out that waiting inside is more them lounging around as they go over their communicators, sip on expensive drinks, and then look up with bright eyes as the group comes out. She found them, Lil says, standing up in a hurry and balancing on her platform heels with ease. Solace lets out a laugh and gives her long tail a twitch for the now bright pink dyed tip to flicker as she rises up to bounce after Lil's. You got his jacket off. Smart. Those muscly arms need to be seen. What took you so long? Did the show distract you? Vera asks, flicking her sunglasses up. She's a little slower than the others, but uses that as an excuse to strut rather than bounce over. Holly's mom is here to visit. Say hi, girls, Irma exclaims as she holds out her arms to present Martha. Oh, wow, I was about to ask if she brought a sister over, but mother makes more sense. It's so nice to meet you, and oh, does this mean that we're going solid? That you're introducing your family to us and we're locking ourselves in? Instead of just having fun and seeing what happens? Because I'm so totally down for that. Solace babbles out in a hurry. I can call my mom and sisters, and we can have a big introduction and make things into a huge family outing and everything. Actually, mom is just visiting but I do trust you girls enough to introduce you. Oh, well that works too. Nice to meet you, miss. I'm Silas. These are my cousins, Vera and Lils. We're a professional groomer, instructor, and fashion designer. Doesn't matter how you come in, you walk out of our care as a living goddess. After all, looking your best means everything. You need your best face and fur on, the kind of clothes that lets the galaxy know you deserve attention and how you move with it can be all the difference from a girl dressing up to a woman who is everything her outfit says she is. We make it happen, Vera says, putting a hand on her hip and cocking her stance. Being beautiful can be hard work, but we can make it work. And believe us that it pays well, so don't worry on that side, oh mother dear. She then looks to Holly and looks her up and down. Of course, as your dear daughter has demonstrated, there's more than one kind of beauty. Strength is one that takes an entirely different kind of work to earn. But in that light, we're all in the beauty industry. But you've heard enough about us cousins. What do you do, ma'am? Lils asks with a smile. I'm a centrist spire sanitation engineer. Uh, a what? Lils asks. It's boring but need a job, one that few people like to talk about, but is thankfully plenty safe thanks to drone technology. Oh, a drone pilot. More than that, drones are part of it, but that's almost entirely because no one wants to actually go where we're sending the drone. Without the drones, the job would be filthy, disgusting, and dangerous, Martha says. Sanitation engineer. Sanitation engineer. She. Oh, oh, Vera says, typing it into her communicator and getting an answer. She gives Martha a look before taking a sniff and then looking to her cousins. They all look at her communicator and look back to Martha with wide eyes. So it's all drone work then? Lilsa asks. Thankfully, in my entire time on the job, I have never had to do more than call in a more advanced drone than normal. Normally, it's just hours on hours of watching something alongside a computer in case it misses something. Oh, so you're paid to just look pretty? That's pretty good, Vera says, trying to save the awkward conversation. Holly has been conspicuously quiet and still during this whole thing, and Bjorn has made a point of not saying a peep. Oh no, I don't have to look pretty. I've gone to work more than once in a house robe without even bothering to brush my fur. No one cares how a sanitation engineer looks. It's an out of sight, out of mind job, much like the product that I ensure gets moved, Martha says, and Holly finally breaks with a snort at the looks on the girls' faces. She starts laughing and Martha laughs with her. So you're not ashamed to have a mother working in sewage anymore, Holly? Martha asks. Not when it's that funny, Holly answers, and Bjorn finally lets himself chuckle. Sorry about that. It was too easy a setup. Not everyone gets to have a glamorous job, Bjorn says with a smile. Still, I'm glad you're all here. We do need to talk. Holly hasn't had a chance for her mother to visit for a bit, and we need to talk about our plans and such. Make sure we're not stepping on each other's toes or getting in each other's ways. Well, considering that Holly and Martha don't have toes, they don't have to worry about that, Vera says, flicking her hair a little. But I get it. We were hoping to still be there at the DJ contest in the dance club tonight. We were hoping for a nice and quick visit before that. 
But it was unplanned. We live in a different arcology, as we're mostly just partying around and not locked anything down yet. Oh, I understand. Finding a proper full family isn't something to just rush. Still, I tend to go to bed earlier than most, so don't you worry about that little bit of dancing. I'm going to be on pillows and under blankets come then, Martha says. You know, we can show you around. These girls know more about Zal War than me and Bjorn do. Holly offers, and the smile she gets in returns lets her know that all four of the girls appreciate it. And who says leadership is hard? Guides for my guides? So you can be guided while you guide? Martha asks, and Bjorn snorts. So long as we don't walk into a minefield, I'll be satisfied. And I'll be taking this back now, please. He says before grabbing his jacket by the scruff and pulling up on it before a quick bit of movement has it throwing in the air and he catches it with ease. Ah, oh, he's going to cover up the muscles. Irma pouts a little. Bjorn rolls his eyes as he unzips the jacket, then ties it around his waist. The little cheer from the rabbis is dutifully ignored, but for a smirk. So ladies, where to first? He asks. Oh, we need to get back to our home arcology first. It's funny, when he's out of undaunted controlled places, he stops playing and the game becomes trying to make him crack. And unfortunately, the best way for me to work out the frustration afterwards is exactly what they want, which only encourages them. Bjorn remarks and Martha gives him an odd look. What? Normally someone in that kind of situation is unaware of it. If it was a bad thing, I'd put a stop to it. But it's not so, why not? No one's getting hurt and it's something that keeps them all predictable. If they stop flirting or start taking things seriously, then I know they think something is up without them even telling me. It's a perfect tell if there's trouble. Of course he has another reason. It can't just be fun, Lil says with a sigh. 